whenever you are. Welcome to another edition of Declare Your Independence with me, Ernest Hancock, and James Corbett, CorbettReport.com. Okay, we are the day before November 5th, remember, remember. Okay, November 4th, 2020, election cycle, Trump, Biden, and um, how much do we care in Western Japan, Mr. James Corbett? <laughs> You know, I'm going to say I don't um, fundamentally, but I get why people are interested in it. But here's my main concern, even for statists in the United States who are invested in this. Uh, what is happening right now is part of a plan. And if you haven't read the plan, then you don't know what's happening right now. And the plan is called the Transition Integrity Project. It has been talked about openly for months that these crony political insiders who totally don't have any interest in the outcome of this election, they're just trying to you know, figure out what will happen, have already wargamed out all the possibilities for every possible you know, thing that the vote, voting machines will spit out as their answer to this selection, including what we are seeing playing out right now. With, with contested, it's not clear. There it looks like both candidates are gonna declare themselves winners. There's gonna be some contest in the courts. They've already wargamed this out. And it does go up to the level of using some sort of military coup, essentially, to force Trump out of office. And you know, right in. there, you got to mention the Trudeau thing. The Trudeau you, you know, thing. Uh, on Freemans Phoenix today, you know, Trudeau said, uh, uh, if he doesn't vacate voluntarily, we're going to do military invasion from Canada. What? <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, I did no. not see that yet. Yeah, no, okay. You know, it's a... Uh, uh, <laughs> What was that? Canadian bacon? What was that movie where Canada <laughs> invaded? You know? Oh, I'm going to pull it up here. I, I, I need I, that real, I need that exact quote because that is too <laughs> crazy. Oh, no, 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 no. I got here. I, I, should, I thought I had, here it is. Trudeau promises military intervention if Trump does not leave office. The global democratic order must be enforced. You know, it does, it is attributed to 4chan. So there's that. Yeah. All you right. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, let's see. If there's a CBC link, let's click on that. Trudeau O'Toole vow to work with Trump while Singh calls on Americans to vote him out. See, the thing is, when you start hearing things about, you know, China, UN drills, ground positioning of whatever the heck, you know, that's when you need a corporateer to walk out there with a camera and go, yeah, there they are. You know, or just saying it doesn't mean anything. And fortunately, yeah. we have the resources that somebody can go take a look. And a lot of times we're scared by what we find, you know, yeah. so I'm... Uh, anyway, yeah, so clicking through to that CBC article, no, Trudeau did not say that, but <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anyway, I mean, but there you go. There's a little funny thing that people, some people will think is that real and they won't bother to check into it. And meanwhile, the actual real verifiable documents of the Transition Integrity Project who came out and, and said that there may be military intervention or whatever, that will also probably dis be dismissed as fake news, even though it's real. It's like so. oftentimes this is cover for that. You know, that's a, one of the things that you've covered a lot of times is that, you know, it's always a, you know, a drill, you know, there's always a thing going on the same day. There's always, always, yep. always. Exactly. And right. when you see stuff like this, I mean, a lot of times I wouldn't just put it up, you know, and I'm not even sure I did. I, oh, I know where it came from. It came from the telegram, you know, the declare your independence telegram. Mm. And uh, they say, oh, look at this. And I'm going, okay. So I forward it to Donna and, uh, and I'm going, you know, this seems like a prelude to a James Corbett documentary. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> It certainly does, doesn't it? Um, so uh, to me, the real point of this selection is in the reaction to what's happening. What's happening now is the real point of this, not the outcome of douchebag or turd sandwich. It's the outcome. Uh, it's the chaos that is the outcome that they wanted. And that's happening. Now, the real question is, I mean, let's put it this way. If they truly, really want to pull the plug and truly f force through a great reset, now would be the time to release whatever pathogen they've got in store for the darkest winter and to pull the plug on the economy and to ramp up the, uh, the riots and the looting and the burning and the craziness of, of surrounding the election chaos. They could truly force things through right now if they wanted to. Um, the only question is, is that the agenda? Is that the plan? Are they going to do that right now? 
Okay, now I don't is know. that their true goal? Is, or is that a step to something? So you, you force their plan. What do you mean? The banking, currency, you know, is it, you know, universal law of Zieg Heil Court of the International, we rule you biodiversity of you're lucky we allow humans thing? I mean, you know, what, what are you talking about? What, what's the stage? Because this could be a well, step let, to let's it. Put it. Let's put it this way. I think there has always been... Um, well, I mean, there are always competing factions within the power circles. And one example of that played out in, uh, during the Bush, uh, the Bush two administration, the second part, the second half. So 2004 to 2008. That was when um, we started to see the, the incredible push that happened in the first, um, uh, first administration of, of Bush Jr., uh, from 2001 to 2004, that that incredible push in the Iraq War and 9/11, and all that craziness, had this incredible momentum. That momentum started to slow in the second uh, administration because, I and mean, here's one specific example: you had uh, 2007. It was the talk that we see coming up over and over about we got to get Iran, got to get Iran, and that was the time when we now know that Cheney was, for example, talking about dressing up U.S. soldiers as Iranians, um, putting them on PT boats and attacking American ships in order to justify uh, attacking Iranians. Uh, again, that's coming from Seymour Hersh, I mean, mainstream stuff. Uh, th that was being discussed, but there was an interesting Senate, I think it was, uh, I can't remember which committee, whichever committee it was that was doing a hearing on something to do with, you know, Iran and the Middle East and whatever. And Zbigniew Brzezinski talked to that at that time. And he was warning, you know, this, this uh, Bush uh, government may try to do something to create an attack and make it look like the Iranians. And he was warning about, essentially, about false flag terrorism. He wasn't that saying that, like, warning. outright, but he was warning about that. Well, and the question would be, well, why? Why would Brzezinski warn about that? Isn't he all part, it's all the same, it's all the same New World Order team, right? Well, no, uh, there are different approaches and different tactics. And some people want to push it a lot faster and push a lot quicker. What? And what? others- they have the same tactics. goal and different tactics? What, what, and, the same that's, what? that's my sense of it. It's ta tactical uh, differences. And I've always thought it would be the smarter move to do this more gradually within within two maybe three generations absolute tops you could get yeah. every single new world order goal you are aiming at by simply introducing it step by step but there is a faction that wants to push this a lot faster a lot quicker and if that faction is in control right now there are many ways that they could make this tumble much more quickly um what you think is for us better can we hurry up and get to a police state so we can leave i mean is at that least mindset? there would be resistance if it is f shoved in your face all at once i think oh. uh, people can be more easily led along okay. step by step um did we talk about the documentary social dilemma you know we did not you know, this is i think i just saw it this week and since we talked last week it was uh i'm driving you know doing the bus thing I'm listening to Joe Rogan interview a guy that started Humane, which was a get off of social media. You know, it's a you yeah. know head and CFO of uh, you know and, and CIO, CTO, all these O's. You know that were Pinterest and Facebook and Google, yeah. Alphabet, yeah, on yeah, on yeah, yeah, you know yeah, Snapchat. Yeah, yeah. And so all these guys, they get together and they're going, "Now yeah, we don't let our children on social media." Hell no. Okay. Yeah. So we are and this documentary. I, uh, what I was, um, yeah, I lost my place on what I, I found so interesting. I do recommend it though. And it'll come to me in a moment here, the segue into this, but it's, um, uh, was very, very, very futuristic in, uh, what we can expect is going to happen by our programming and doing this quickly or doing it slowly. And yeah. I'm thinking that things always, it's slow, so slow. And then boom, it's overnight. It doesn't happen all at once, but it does happen overnight and i'm feeling overnight coming and when you say it's gradual all the time that's never been my experience you know you, you if you know where they're going you can see all the stuff they got to do to get there but then they pull the trigger i think it's a trigger pull in time mm. yeah yeah it, that's a good analogy yeah i mean you set up and you plan and you prepare and you get every, all your ducks in a row but eventually you pull the trigger because it is this a trigger pull? why would they do this because uh, they can. Why didn't they do it last year? Because they couldn't. 
Uh, presumably, yes. Um, so what exactly what ducks are in the row now that weren't in the row last year? I mean, I, it's not exactly clear to me. But then again, that's maybe that's part of the game too. They want us guessing about that particular intention and why now and all of that rather than focusing on what's actually happening. At any rate, I, I think my only point was that this could be the trigger pull. And if it is, there are many ways that they could uh, facilitate this a lot more quickly. I think regardless, uh, the central bank digital currency paradigm, the new monetary order, and all the geopolitical upheaval that comes with that is coming regardless. Doesn't matter whether it's blue or red in office, doesn't matter whether it takes 10 years to get there or one month. Uh, at any rate, all of that is coming. You know, well, I can see the uh, the preparation for for this. I don't think it's going to get better you know people are starting to wake up a little bit people are starting to go what they, oh oh i know what it was that okay this is what before i forget at the end of that podcast and i watch the social dilemma uh, it's on netflix you know it's great you guys watch it you now it's good information um at the end of the interview with rogan he he read a piece that was an analysis of brave new world in 1984 and he yeah. was born in 1984, thought it was going to be, you know, authoritarian, you know, make you do it, scare you, torture you, rats, you know, all this kind of stuff. But in Brave New World, you beg for it. You wanted it. Yeah. Give me, fork it over. You, yeah, know, yeah, I, yeah. you know, I picked that. I vote that. Let me do that. So Yeah, I believe was, he was reading from the introduction to Amusing Ourselves to Death by Neil Postman um, from the 80s, which was a very profound, very insightful book. I re recommend people read it. Um, and that's, a, that's an observation that's been around in the conspiracy space for a while now. Yeah, it's not 1984, it's Brave New World. But actually, I saw a meme recently that I prefer. Um, it's the Venn diagram, and one circle is 1984, one circle is Brave New World, one circle is Fahrenheit 451. And in the middle, where all of those circles meet, you are here. I think it's not 1984 or Brave New World or Fahrenheit 451. No, it's all of them. And they just, you know, which which spice do we want to add a little bit more to this melange? And, you, you know, you'll eat it. Well, way you, you serve it. I mean, sometimes you do a Brave New World, you get to it. Okay, you wanted it. You voted for it. You're 51.2% in the general public opinion poll if we, you know, pull the 1984 trigger. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, of course, I mean, that's the system. So I guess, oh, well, 50.1% of the pop public want it. I guess we have to do it now, whatever that is, yeah. Well, is it sustainable, though? I don't think that's the point. I mean, uh, I don't do think they're think going for sustainability of the system uh, as it exists. In fact, quite explicitly, they're trying to collapse the system as it exists so they can bring oh, it in. that's not what I mean. I mean, uh, they're... Because they're just going to, they don't give a crap whether things prosper or not. You know, they got their slave robot, android, yeah. you know, whatever the heck on their island of space station, it doesn't matter. You know, this is just a means to get that. I get that. But I'm going, is it sustainable, you know, to, for them? I mean, can they, like, keep breathing in and out? I mean, there's yeah. you know, pitchforks and torches at the gate. Do we have enough information? That's why I know that they're just uh, deplatforming and censoring everybody. You know, just the fact that you can be able to provide context and, and facts and, you know, documentary of the James Corbett variety. And, you know, they're like, damn it, man, the, the slaves are learning. That's the threat, you know, and, I, and I, I have always seen that as the threat. But do you think what they do, they get total control on this, that they're going to be insulated? They're going to be, mm. you know, isolated. They're, this, this worked out for me. You know, crime, Butler Schaefer used to always tell me, he goes, the hell crime doesn't pay. Ask any of these guys here and politicians. Crime pays all the heck until it doesn't. You know, mm. so I'm just going, is there it doesn't? Or is this like you're thinking, man, this is a forever thing. There isn't going to, it's going to, we have to wait a couple of generations or millennia to get the next Neo to come save us. I mean, I mean, yeah. how high are you think it is? Oh, I, I, I constantly say it. Um, this is the game for all the marbles because once the technocratic controls go in with the technology that they have now, I don't see a way out of it. Or at least the technology that's on the cusp. We're almost there. Once they have the robotic armies, literally, I mean, once they have the, the weaponized drone bots that can hunt you down, that's, I mean, what resistance is really possible there in a meaningful sense? Well, that's where uh, this mandatory vaccines, vaccine stuff comes in and, you know, genetically modified foods in the air and the water and the floor, blah, 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 blah. You know, they don't even have humanity as a, as a, 
as a as a concept as a species as you know our biggest defense is our reason ability to you know kind of look into the future or see what's in our yeah no he's coming back in hold on you got me now you good yeah, yeah, okay. yeah sorry. so you know i'm 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 wondering um see how this plays out i just see that there's always going to be you know humanity is the biggest threat that this is a much higher, you know, when, you know, that's when God comes, Christ comes, we, we become Christ, we go to Christ, we, we open up the antennas when we need it the most, we got the powers of the, you know, whatever the heck, and yeah. that has been history, so I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how this perpetuates when they get these total controls, you know, to, mm. but if they chemically alter us, if they change our DNA, then that's a whole nother game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's yep. my worry. They make it all. I mind too. I share it. Um, in a sense, that's what I think what I mean by the convergence of the Venn diagram with 1984 and Brave New World, because once you have the robot drone armies that can enforce anything from, you know, with a click of a button, and on top of that, you're engineering the population through food and vaccines and all, all the other things so that they actually start to become the cattle that you treat them as. I mean, I, I don't know a way out of that that isn't going to be miraculous, all essentially. Right, well, I'm looking for a miraculous suggestion, a solution from James Corbett. I mean, you know, let's do it. Well, that's why I think we have to stop it before, before we can get to that point. And there's no way to stop it from within participating within the system, which is why everyone who is investing all of their mental energy and fortitude right now on helping to generate this election selection chaos are playing into this system. They are not fundamentally stopping it. Newsflash, I, I, I can't, I, I, I get on a certain sense the people in the conspiracy space, broadly speaking, are now just Republicans. And now it's just like, you know, MAGA hat, Trump, yay, you know, he's, look, the Democrats are clearly evil, so Trump's only slightly evil, you know, that kind of calculus. But I, I cannot fathom how anyone believes that, oh, okay, so Trump won with 50.1%, so now, you know, now we're safe for another four years, and we don't have to think about any of this, and it'll all go away. What are you talking about? The last four years have been absolute chaos and, and ridiculous foment and nonstop nonsense, that's only going to increase even if Trump gets in, in fact, especially if Trump gets in office. The only good thing that I see coming out of this is the delegitimization of the idea of government itself, but I don't see that coming quickly enough. And sadly, uh, it's pretty much baked into the cake that who, who, whichever puppet gets selected, that half of the population will go back to sleep and will be like, yep, the system works and yay, you know, we're the ones in power now and power is great. And the other half will be like, oh no, how did this happen? It's just, and I don't know a way to break that cycle. I, that's all I try to do is try to break people, snap people out of that spell. But uh, it's the most powerful spell that's ever been cast on humanity. You know, it always comes down to a barefoot, long-haired guy with a robe, or bald. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm, you know, I don't think I'm going to be that guy. No. Well, I mean, whatever. You know, it's always a guy. Sometimes a woman. You know, there's a character, there's an idea, there's a thing, and uh, and that's what you know, demonstrates why it's always a spiritual thing. You know, it always comes down to something that's, that's bigger. You know, there's something tapped into. There's something because, you know, a friend of mine said in three-dimensional space here, in 3D space, we don't have the goodies to go up against these guys, you know? Now, they win. They, they, they got the uh, stealth bombing B2 hypersonic starship. I mean, you know, here we go. So what do we have? You know, it's ideas and philosophy and compassion and love and, and desire for something better. And it's, it's a higher, when you go, you appeal to the higher um, levels of humanity or, you know, how, uh, in spirit, how like an angel. I mean, you know, that is what always I see throughout history and mythology. That's what, it's always a Neo, you know, the Neo character. I don't want to count on that. That's like people waiting for the uh, the apocalypse and revelation to be. I'm just sitting on the sidelines and you know and uh, you know put me on the escalator. But I'm going. Nah, Christ comes, he's gonna find me busy. I mean, you know, you gotta be worthy of whatever reward. Because damn, you know, it's a, it's defeating the forces of evil. You know, and what do you think should be done to do that? Uh, okay. Yes, let's go down this path. So the answer to this 
problem clearly isn't political. It's not gonna be on that level of things. And it clearly does comport with the, the spiritual or the, at least the essence of humanity, whatever you wanna deem that is. So the answer to this is going to be on a different level as the problem that we're being presented with. Now, other than, other than alerting people to the real nature of this, this contest that is taking place right now for the, the soul of humanity, the future of the human species, other than alerting people to that, uh, I don't know what else I can do in terms of my responsibility to the rest of the world. Now, I have a responsibility to myself and my family, and I choose what I do with my body. I don't choose what anyone else does in any sense, and I do not, I cannot morally enforce that on anybody else, and I don't presume to have that right. So all I can do is spread information. That's, that's literally the only thing that I can do that will actually affect things. And as you say, it's the guy in the robes and the sandals who comes out, you know, the crazy man who emerges from the woods and it has this, you know, crazy story that for yeah, whatever reason it? catches on and billions of people get affected by it. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'm that person, but I think that is the that is the only thing that has ever changed the course of human history is crazy people with crazy ideas that people catch on to. You know, oftentimes that person doesn't think it's that they're that person anyway, and a lot of times they're not. I've been through you know a lot of really good quality men and women that we've uh, promoted for good reasons, and and a lot of times they don't even understand why they get support. You know, it, it's not, it's just in their nature and it's just, you find it beneficial and rare. And there's a lot of beneficial and rare. And to me, the massive population that we have in the billions, especially with the next half coming online, they're going to find each other. All of a sudden, they're going to have twice as many people that are going, you know, I've like, you know, uh, calculated it in my mind and you suck, you know, and you need to be dealt with. And you guys, this, wow, man, this is not in well. I've gamed this out, and I went to 1,400 levels of go, and now we and, and we lose, man. This sucks. So there, there's always some self-preservation. It's not always altruistic. If somebody goes, it makes me feel better. You know, I, I, I have a, a longer life. I, my progeny will continue. I, I, whatever the motivation is, they calculate it out. They have the capability of doing it, and they do it. And, and, and there's so many resources that are available now that have not been available before. And I'm not thinking that of the bad guys, and of course, they want to increase their numbers and their scope and power and enhance their goodies and their uh, intrusiveness over your life for their benefit. I get it. They and those won't leave me alone. But there's such an enormous doubling of population that's coming online to even watch Corbett videos. And when that happens and they go through what they're going to try to do to Africa, you know, what they've done to everybody else, when they get into, you know, the other reaches of the world and here it comes, they're going to, I mean, heck, look what's going on in Thailand. You know, I'm just going, damn, don't they have Facebook accounts? Oh, that's what the social dilemma thing was talking about. Now in the developing world, you get a phone and they see Facebook is the internet because it's preloaded, it's free, and it's the only thing you don't have to pay for. So when you had Miramar, you know, going on, all that was a Facebook genocide. It just, their algorithm just amped it up in the, and all of a sudden a bunch of people weren't even online, they know what the hell is going on, or dead. You know, this is, this is the kind of power that we're dealing with. And I'm going, this is, there is going to come a, a universal rash lab. Did you ever see the movie Enemy Mine with Lewis Gossett Jr. and uh, Dan Scott? Anyway, it's an alien. You know, we're fighting with these people we never saw before we land on a planet. They go, you know, become friends eventually surviving. And he's, uh, the alien guy's reading from this book. You know, and he, he explains it to him. And the uh, earthling goes, yeah, we have such a book. And the other guy goes, truth is truth. That's what I'm looking for. There's a universal truth is truth. And that truth is the power that we have to stop. In fact, it's the only power that will stop what we're up against. But you have to have the faith that we can. And you need the tools to help. And you need to get off your butt and do it. That's why I like when you tell the people, go copy down my MP4s, man, as they're dropping left and right everywhere. Josh Segerson had his documentary thing. Hey, did you, uh, YouTube just scraped everything. Did you happen to save that on IPFS? And I'm like, oh, there you go. There you go. So we had that for them. But this is, you know, you, you do this stuff, you know, and I'm looking forward to, of course, you being of use. That's why we've been so supportive of saving your stuff. But to what end? You know, what are we looking for? What's the battle? You know, what weirdy module do we got to you know, develop? I mean, you, you see my point? 
I want for the solution. I don't want the doom and gloom all the time. It's like, because it always has been the darkest before the dawn. It always is the evil sons of whatever blood sucking child sacrifice and scumbag pieces of crap. It always is that. That's what we rise up to to defeat. You know, so I'm, I'm just trying to keep it positive because, you know, I mean, what else are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, uh, I, I haven't watched all of, I watched the beginning of The Social Dilemma. I haven't watched it all yet. But from everything that I hear, it's great for about three quarters of the movie. And then the last quarter is, and all this fake news is coming from these conspiracy hey, theorists. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why we have to censor them. So that's where that narrative ultimately goes. Because the truth right. is what the government, what your government says. Now, there are bad governments out there, you know, those other governments that, that spread fake news. But our government is rich and pure and wonderful and white and pure no, as the wasn't that. it was this this is the narrative that they used on the conspiracy thing conspiracy theories like flat earth and QAnon. okay yeah. well which ones you know what i probably you know 9 they, 11 flat earth q whatever they're, they're all, the, all same. the same that's what they're trying to do they you know q anon flat earth same thing but what they really were you know uh demonstrating they kind of made that you know they were kind of stretching on that one but the um the flat earth thing, they were showing how the algorithm created that phenomenon, you know, yeah. how it amplified it, how it, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and you could do a bunch of stuff. So that's how dangerous it is. Yep. You know, I mean, and, and of course, whether you equate QAnon with that or not is, you know, I, I thought they were kind of reaching for that, but you know, is it, I don't know. Right. They, they haven't um, impressed me yet. Uh, Sorry, I kind of, that was a side note before I answered what your main point was. Oh, uh, yeah, about what we do, what we actually positively do, rather than focusing on the doom porn. Uh, again, as I've been saying throughout this entire thing, absolutely none of my ideas for solutions are any different today than they were a year ago. They're exactly the same things that we need to be doing. It's just that the importance of them has been increased a million times. But it's the exact same things. So when you type solutions into corporatereport.com, you're going to get dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of podcasts and interviews and videos and articles that I've done over the past decade plus about different solutions. And they are all the same thing. First and foremost, the absolute bedrock of all of the solutions is building community. Without community, you can come up with whatever crazy cool idea for some sort of new monetary trading system that goes around the man and doesn't use central bank currency. But if you don't have a community that is based around that, then the, the, the cart's over here and the horse is over here. You can't put the cart before the horse. It has to be based on community. So building community is the bedrock. And getting some form of, if not self-sufficiency, at least, what do they call it, autarky, where you can be sufficient within your community to, there's enough people around you that have like mind that are cooperating towards the same goal that you can at least get yourselves through the worst of the disaster. And that's going to involve, of course, first and foremost, food self-sufficiency. So I have done work, for example, on guerrilla gardening and other things about, uh, it's the simplest things of just participating in the agoristic markets, the farmer's markets and whatever, knowing who your local food suppliers are and how you can directly purchase from them rather than going to the supermarket stores is the kind of basic survival skill that unfortunately a lot of the population has uh, forgotten over the years. And that will be uh, the basis for the community that then you can start to do trading within the community and hopefully you'll have your own community currency or a complementary currency, alternative currency, cryptocurrency, precious metals, all of those things. Those are the types of things. And I know no one wants to hear this because that is years of exceptionally hard work. And it's going to, at the end of the day, if we're lucky, while the rest of the world is collapsing, we get to cling on to some sort of basic subsistence life. Yay, right? It's not going to look like the life that you've led. If you want the life that you've got around you right now, there's, you know, take the mark and get the vaccines, roll up your sleeves, because that's going to be the option that's going to be on the table for you. And I don't have some sort of magical, hey, guys, just vote, vote team red, and everything will be better again. I don't think that that exists. Now, maybe I'm completely wrong about that, totally out to lunch, and there's a simple, easy solution on the table that's waiting to be picked up, and I'm all ears, guys. <laughs> if you have a better one, I'm all ears. But if not, it's going to involve creating these communities. You know, it's been, these oppressions are not being left alone or the fly that makes you get off out the couch and you got to, you know, chase it down. You know, um, it's been what's driven humanity to explore new places to live. You know, get me out of here. And I'm just like, you know, this Mars thing is cool, but 
I'm not digging it. You know, the, the atmosphere, the gravity, the change you have to get. I'm like, you know, earth rocks, man. You know, it's pretty, I, I might go for a weekend visit or something, but I'm like, you know, I, I'm digging on the earth. I like earth. I like the, you know, protection from you know, the magnetic field and so on. I'm, I'm, I grew up here. I developed here. I'm, I'm, I'm digging it. You know, so, you know, is it time to fight? And when you do that, it's fight whom? The first some bitch that comes over the hill to your Galt's Gulch, you leave me alone and you just left. I mean, you know, you know, how do you make that determination? You know, what's your standard? What's your, you don't have any rights that you're not willing to defend. That, that's the level of your rights right there. Exactly. Yeah. No, that's exactly right. And so, yeah, the, is it you versus the world? Are you going to be the one-man Rambo that's going to take on everyone and somehow survive all this? I don't know. I mean... Good luck. I just, I don't see that being a viable alternative to this. So you're, you're sneaking, sneak and hide and run and, and duck and cover and camouflage and, you know, you, yeah. you, and you, you come out at night. Yeah. yeah some people but That's do. part of what <laughs> spreading, <laughs> that's part of what spreading information and awareness is about, is finding the other people who can rub together the, you know, two remaining brain cells they have after all these injections and fluoride and GM monstrosities pumped into their bodies every day the people who can still think for themselves and still recognize what's happening gathering them together and virtually we've been doing that for the past couple of decades obviously they're cracking down on that it's time to move to physical that's you know, I mean, I, is there another way out of this to no I, I came to the same conclusion you know i mean we always you know we know this but um it dawned on me when uh, i saw this social dilemma thing it kind of put a cap on what i've been thinking about for the past few weeks has been uh, Meetup. Meetup went away. Meetup was a mm. powerful tool. Meetup was yeah, a yeah. big, that was the Ron Paul yeah. thing. It was a meetups. And people yeah. got together and they started, you know, having restrictions on that and surveillance on that and payments yeah, on yeah. that and dues yeah, on yeah. that. And doing all, I'm going, yeah, we need, you know, pirate reputation. We have uh, the fourth letter of reprisal is scuttlebutt. You know, how you have a, a digital rep representation. Your, your reputation precedes you. You know, do you want to, do they want you a part of this community? Give you a good example. Bob has a family home that uh, a guy got sick and he went to Florida for hospice. So he had this home open. He's going to leave it in uh, uh, Northern Massachusetts in the winter. And he's like, no, nah, I ain't doing that. So he goes back, gets it all cleaned up and ready for, uh, is there somebody that can stay here? They all, they pay for their own utilities, you know, clean the driveway, you know, for the next time it's free. You know, who, who do I get? What, what's the reputation? You know, where, where, where do I go on Craigslist for that? You know, is there a community that, well, we knew someone and hooked them up and, you know, it worked out for them, but it made it all the more important that we have a, a, a community by reputation of something that we can, you know, build that community with and it have, you know, reputation of, you know, people, you know, it's like a Yelp for individuals, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and and after a while, it can't be gamed, and that's why you have to have meet space. You got to meet people. Yeah. You got to yeah. be at the places you know. You interact with them. Some you know keyboard warrior friend of whatever the heck that come stay you know on your couch while they you know stay overnight so they can go to the Antifa rally in Portland or something. Not what I'm talking about, you know. So something, but but it works. Yeah, but it. I mean, at least that's a step of flexing that muscle. Here's here's the thing. Okay, so. Let's take it from the other side of the argument. Let's say you are the psychopathic, vicious controller who wants to control the world. And you know all this. And you know the reactions that are going to come from all of this. So what kinds of things do you want to eliminate? You want to eliminate the, the pesky people online who are spreading information and waking up millions of people to the real agenda. So fake news. So let's censor people. Let's put out the social dilemma so people will be on board with the censorship agenda. Um, you know that the, when the rubber really hits the, the road, is that a term? <laughs> when the rubber hits the road. Uh, you know that it's going to come down to, yeah, you know that it's going to come down to physical meeting up in real life, not just this virtual interaction. So what do you do? You outlaw people physically meeting up. You can't come within six feet of another human being. You right. cannot gather in groups. You cannot do anything that we don't tell you you're allowed to do. They're literally outlawing any viable resistance to their rule for the rest of you know, time essentially because time is running out so uh, what this comes back down to is something that we talked about a couple of weeks ago the solution the fundamental solution at the moment is disobedience when they say you cannot gather together in groups of more than six or whatever they say 
you have to at some point defy those orders because they are not actual orders. They are suggestions from your rulers to make their rule over you a little bit easier. And you don't break those orders at some point. It's game over. I mean, what else are you going to do? So yeah, kind of disobedience is the fundamental underlying part of this. That's kind of the point that we made with uh, uh, Captain Mark. You know, instead of the obey, Andre the Giant, obey, Logan said, belay, like, and belay that order, you know, ignore that order, you know, belay. Now, of course, all climbers want to have that shirt. But the point that it was making is that, you know, this very thing, you got to be willing to disobey, you know, but then you, and I've done <coughs> my activist years, I've done this many times. I got, nah, we're going to arrest you. I know. No, we really are. I really, really know. I mean, you got to be willing to go through feasible for you to be able to just say that I, um, uh, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to do that. Okay. They keep you overnight. They put you in the orange fencing. They do whatever the heck they're going to do. And then uh, they let you go. It's going to get to the point and they're not letting you go. It's going to be V for vendetta. Not funny now, is it Mr. Funny man? So, I mean, you know, we, your, your argument is we got to be like, uh, do a whole bunch before that happens. Essentially, yeah. I don't think we have a great deal of time. Um, I think we should have been doing this for years already. Um, yeah. I, and I, I don't have any hope porn for people. I know people are desperate for hope porn right now and will latch onto anything. You know, 50,000 sealed indictments any, any day, guys, any month, any year, any decade now. It's going to happen. But I cannot do that. I cannot give people hope porn that I know is going to crush their soul when it doesn't come true. Um, all I can say is, yeah, I don't know if we're going to win this thing. But what are you going to do? Just lay down and take it? I, mean, no, it used I, to I guess be, that's, that's the only other option. There were heroes and characters and comic books and Captain whatever the heck and super something. And um, all that's been changed. You know, the, the kids coming up now, they don't have the classics to, you know, that give them the Aesop fable of, you know, don't be stupid, you know. So it's, uh, and they've all been altered and SJW'd and, you know, uh, regendered and, you know, retasked to whatever the heck. Superman is working with the UN to promote vaccines. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Superman, after Superman became popular before all the Marvel stuff, this is like, 2009 to 11 around and then we we knew superman was uh comic books was there promoting vaccinations then i've seen some other you know stuff that they've been doing to do this this is what our kids have now that's what the grandkids have now so one of my things and you know the the extract yourself something you should do right away pull your kids out of the government mandatory youth indoctrination camps and i think that you know this lockdown and let this stuff happen it may have backfired a little bit on them. A lot of people going, damn, you're learning what? Damn, now you want to teach them what? You're overt about what? I think we'll leave them home and we'll take care of it. So that's part of it. You know, I, I, I hear that and I've heard anecdotal stories about that, but do we have any data on that? Like is homeschooling uh, curricula going through the roof in terms of sales? Or, I mean, is there some sort of thing we can point to? People yeah, are actually I didn't doing this? Look at the beginning. About it? of the school season and it was as high as 20 30 percent of people kept mm. their kids home you know mm. so and then when they you know have the online stuff you know how many you know not everybody shows up and then you have some states like tennessee was going around um we don't need a warrant to do a wellness check on all the children and then we're gonna do it for everybody else too what the hell you know so it, it's always in the name of the children but they're going to do what they want to do and somebody's knocking on your door saying they're the census plus people or something you know so and oh, that's another thing yeah we got the census thing going on they got all kinds of excuses to come get some you know what they were doing last time in 10 that's when the acorn were you know gps and mapping out front doors of you know you're the wrong kind of bumper sticker guy or something yeah yeah um incidentally just on that school note isn't it interesting now that now even nature and other mainstream science is coming out and saying, yeah, actually it turns out COVID uh, schools aren't COVID hotspots. So maybe we got that wrong, which 
could be part of the narrative. Put your kids back in schools. Don't Absolutely. worry. We'll take care of your kids. Absolutely. I think, I think they're going, eh. I remember when they were doing uh, online schools and parents started getting the watch and they were, they were pontificating on this before. They were saying, you know, it's not the same as having a uh, controlled environment, you know, with a captive audience that we get to whatever. Now we got aunts, uncles, grandma, grandpa, mom and dad, big brother, big sister, whatever is watching us calling your kids. We have a friend, um, uh, Matt Smith, his son, Maxim, has, you know, teams for Trump, which he changed to something, you know, and uh, he was just talking about how their Black Lives Matter uh, um, matters in them in school when he goes back online. He has a junior, he's a sophomore in high school. He has a junior high sister that they're indoctrinating, you know, how many racist white people does it take to fund a, you know, poor, whatever the heck. I mean, you know, this kind of stuff. Well, he's been documenting it. You know, and he's taking screenshots and what shirts they're wearing and what they're saying and how they're. So I'm going, you know, parents start seeing this. Then they start complaining that parents are starting to say, you're violating the sanctity of our brainwashed, you know, cubicle for your child that is ours for this hour or something. You know, so mm. I'm seeing a lot of bright spots. You know, people, what's the big thing that we want to, like you're saying, you, you want to see for the BS that this election cycle is the fact that you, you, you're witnessing that you're, you're watching it. I mean, how can you not be affected by it? So if you get out of it and you see how much better your children thrive and if you love them and you're not, you know, freaking, you know, too far gone anyway, you know, that's a benefit. I mean, what other benefits, you know, pull your kids out. What's the next thing? Don't get a license for your church, your business, your restaurant. I mean, how far you want to do it? Uh, this time that we are living through does present the opportunity for people to actually make a choice about the direction that they are heading, which um, is refreshing because generally things are just presented as sort of, you know, here's, here's the new rule and here's how you comply with it. At least in this particular time, people are being forced to consciously choose uh, slavery or freedom. And I mean that in the sense, uh, for example, all the, the store owners and gym owners and whatever who have been told, you're not essential, you're going to close down. Oh, your competition, they're allowed to be open because they're a major you know, mega corporation, but you're, you're going to have to shut down and give up everything you fought for your whole life. And there are people who are standing up and saying no and disobeying. And that to me is, is a good thing to force the confrontation rather than to let it sort of happen in the background where people never actually have to make a conscious decision. That, I mean, this is a time of potential great awakening and uh, a great activation of the population in a way that we've never seen. It's just a question of whether it's going to play out that way. And the one thing that I think has disappointed me about this year more than anything else is the extent to which, at least seemingly, at least we are told by the media, people are going along with this and are voluntarily adopting whatever measures they're telling us to adopt. That, the idea that you could lock the majority of the world's population in their homes for weeks, months at a time, and most people not only go along with it, but actually actively support it, that's crazy. That's insanity. That's and that's the worst part about stuff, all of this, yeah. is if people do voluntarily choose to go along with it. I'm, um, I, I, you know, I'm trying to get an upbeat, you know, leave on this thing. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of good signs. I see a lot of communities starting to develop. I see them developing, you know, trade routes, you know, amongst neighbors outside of whatever. They're not worrying about getting some permit or something like before. You know, well, we need to yeah. you know, comply with it. Now that that's kind of going down the wayside. They're like, no, what do you got? What I got? How we trade what we got? You know, we're not going to fill out a form, you know, afterwards. And, um, this has to be a good thing. The children are starting to, you know, see what it's like without government schools and teachers and, you know, doing things differently and sports and extracurricular and homeschool co-op groups of field trip of whatever the heck around the schedule of, you know, best for mom. I, you know, that, that's a good thing. You start seeing a lot of people, even the RV thing are moving more rural or getting decentralized, you know, power and, uh, uh, or food. And I mean, so I'm going, there's a lot of these things, but I look at the bad guys and what their margin of operations was for like, uh, 
you know, Amazon and Walmart. I mean, they may be big. They got to be. They even exist the way they are. So what happens when we deny them three and a half, you know, a half percent of uh, revenue? What happens when we, you know, lower the traveling for airlines by 20 per 30, 40 percent? What happens when? You know, they're going to have to come back to us for our participation in some way, but we got to have a price. We got to go, no, I'm not wearing a freaking mask. No, I'm not taking the vaccine. But I've had, I have listeners in a telegram, his wife, they, the requirement that she's continued to work there. She's the primary breadwinner and uh, I'm not doing the vaccine. You're fired. You know, so who do they blame? I, you know, I, I, what do you do? You know, we got to have support structures for this. I'm, I remember, you know, there's a lot of, I, I have so many stories over the years to where I see this benefit coming up, but I'm not sure it fixes it as much as it just kind of causes them pause, pushes them back a little bit. They get a little more serious. They're going to, they're going to inject you by force. I mean, it's, it's going to be on physical violent resistance. When does that happen? You actually raise a good um, point there in general about not just not accepting and not going along and not participating in the system. And in fact, that was uh, Wendy McElroy um, just wrote an op-ed for the Future of Freedom Foundation, Libertarianism Put and Boycotts, up, yeah. where she goes through the history of this, uh, this idea. If there is any chance whatsoever for peaceful revolution at this point, it has to come through organized and committed boycotts of these corporations like Amazon or what have you. I think we're light years away from that actually happening in reality, the way things are right now, because so much of the population is dependent on these things right now that they cannot envision boycotting the one thing that's my lifeline to the okay, outside world. I, I give you a good idea. That is what. Okay, let me give you that. Maybe you and I can work on this if you're if it rings with you. Okay, it's a one of Ernie ideas. Here we go. We have a website for years that we haven't used. It's called Black Market Friday. Blackmarketfriday.net, you know, info, whatever the heck we got, all right? The whole concept was is that, you know, instead of giving them a bunch of the money, instead of it going to Walmart and Amazon and making them gazillion, billion trillionaires, is that, you know, just that day, you don't have to stop forever. You don't got to, you know, oh, my God, what am I going to do for Christmas? But try and do as much as you're shopping or something done on Black Market Friday. And as a concept, and you provide, you know, like purse or something, you know, well, that still uses Amazon, but, you know, you, you provide, uh, you know, Craigslist, you know, look at the, you know, in your local your offer up, here's all these different things that my kids freaking use all the time anyway, you know, so uh, you, you have these, these relationships with individual meat space, somebody other than the FedEx guy shows up at your front door, you go to theirs and you get something, you buy something nicer, but maybe higher quality and used. You, 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 you extract yourself. And what does it take? 3%, 5%. What's the number? I mean, what's it go? 10% of the population says, nah, I'm good. We're going to create our own barter and find some people and go to the dairy and get our cheese and milk and good meat, you know, from straight from the bite me. Okay. So black market Friday, it's coming up, man. I mean, it's right. What do you want to do? It's, it's exactly the right idea. I just wish it had been done before this point because it's getting harder to do this now. It, imagine how easy it would have been before. But then again, people wouldn't have seen the need for it so much before. Yeah, um, so of- you're right. I mean, this, this is the idea that needs to be seated in the pub- public mind right now. Yeah, you know, I'll see what we could do. I mean, we've kept it there for this very reason when it's Super Bowl time. You know, was it be you kind of get it going? It's you know, we got short notice. We can, you know, because we always work best when you know efficient of just you know I got three days making yeah. you know. And um, yeah, I'm trying to think can, what's the sign you're gonna make out of this. <laughs> well, we already have a uh, uh, a website. Go to Black. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I well here maybe I can pull it up in the share thing. You know, um, if I can remember what the heck it is, it is. Now we end on a positive note with this. Heck yeah, damn it. You know, the uh, share. And go black market. Let's see, black market Friday. Black market is usually spelled without the N. Yeah, it's a small keyboard. I can't freaking uh, there. Black market Friday dot info. I think that's it. All right. So give it one for 
So I'll let that load. Now, you know, the main th thing that I'm, I, it's just a concept, you know, get people thinking about this. And when we first came up with it, it was cool, but it, it would take a lot of work and effort. And there's always 5 billion things to do. And it always sneak up on you just like it just did now. I for, you know, forgot I had it. But um, the main thing is that it just, it starts the process, you know, it just starts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we got the site here. We have, you know, different marketplace. We just kind of got it going, you know. Yeah. And then we have here, what do we got here? You know, it's some, uh, you know, graphic that we did for something. So, yeah, I think it's going to wind up being this anyway. Yeah. So In my head, I'm thinking, you know, we need, we need a place where buyers and sellers can, can meet up and, and can organize and, and you can sort by geographical area and what have you. I'm, basically, I'm thinking of like recreating some sort of Silk Road type idea. Well, you know, if I have my telegram on this thing, I show you they have it. It's called Agorist Marketplace. One of the guys, um, um, Mike, well, it's the guy that sells the Silver Cosmetics on Freedoms Phoenix, uh, ppmcosmetics.com, and it's parts per million cosmetics.com. And it's really, you know, so you get salves and so on. Oh, it's not really a, you know, a antibacterial lotion. It's a, it's a cream for your hands. I mean, that kind of crap. So um, he has created a black market online, you know, on the Telegram right now. They've been doing it. You know, a lot of the guys, you know, Brian and Allman, and Derek and all those guys have been doing that thing. It's already going. So um, that, you know, I should, I talked to him about, I think I mentioned this. I need to go because using more dollars is a political decision. This holiday season, let's show everyone the power of alternatives. See, this is November, November 15. This is five years ago we you yeah. know, created this, but we never did anything with it. <clears throat> but I kept the domain, you know. And I think this is, you know, it's a, this may be something we build. Let me, we'll see what we do. But I, I don't recognize some of those symbols there. New Liberty Dollars, what's SS? Oh, Shire Society, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, and then this is Silver Day. They had this, is, they were called um, uh, Sons of Liberty. They minted their, minted their own silver. Oh, it looks very occult. Okay. And, this is, right, and this is Silver Circle. And then, you know, don't tread on me. Don't tread on meme was a t-shirt thing that they were doing uh, at the time. Okay. Bit, you know, Bitcoin's Bitcoin, not bombs and Bitcoin. Yeah. So yeah, you know, this is, yeah, it's five years old. I mean, seriously. Yeah. And this is called yep, Sons yep, of yep, Liberty. Yep. It's just, it was, it was more a 1776 kind of thing, you know, mm -hmm. but the, um, yeah, but anyway, it's just a concept. I mean, we've been thinking, yeah. we got like minds, you know, this guy, but I'm always five years ahead. You know, I'm going, yeah, this is going to be, you know, the, so maybe it's time. You know, I, I know they're already starting to do this kind of thing, but like you're saying, it's hard to get people to give up something for a month. You know, they just, eh, I think I'll decline, you know? So my thing is, is that, can you do a day? Can you do black market Friday and not give them, you know, the benefits of the yeah. whatever? Can you pick yeah. a freaking day? That's going to be the best way to at least introduce people to the concept, right? I think so. I mean, that was yeah. the idea. Yeah. Yep, so, yep, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. See, people are thinking. Wait, when is, uh, when, is, when is the actual Black Friday this year? I don't know. It's a day after Thanksgiving. It's the 20-something. Yeah. I don't know. So we ha we'd have time to actually get this idea out. Yeah, no, we got time. Hijack some of that. You can't, you can't go shopping like normal this year. Why don't you shop abnormally? You know, there is a, yeah, it's a telegram. You know, go to uh, Freemason. Yes, yeah, it could be the socially distanced way to buy your stuff <laughs> right. with crypto online. Well, it's not, I mean, yeah, they're using, it's, it's also not just, you know, buying something not at Walmart, but using an alternative currency. You know, yeah, then you're supporting exactly. a small business. It's like, it's like a threefer, you know? Yeah, you, you, yeah, you, there's a lot we could do with that. You know, so it's, uh, yeah, let's think about it a second. Give me a second here. Agorist Market, and it's, it's called, Agorist market. You go on Telegram, you put in Agorist market, boom, there it is. You know, and it's high, high yo silver is the guy. That's what he goes by. Have you ever had him on? Yeah, no, I've met him. He's uh, he's been a big supporter of the show. He's the guy, one of the guys that's been doing a lot of the IPFS coding the strips out there. They helped a lot with you. You know, he's one of the guys. Cool. 
Well, why don't you get him on and see if he can uh, help spread this idea? But right now? Well, in the near future, yeah. before Black Friday. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. Okay, all right, Donald, where's my, where's my phone? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Um, see if you can, um, you know, well, crap. Let me do him right now. Uh, Donna, go, Donna, come here, baby. Go on the Telegram with Agris Marketplace or on Love Bus or Declare. And uh, to Hi, hi Yo Silver, it's Mike, uh, you know, Silver Mike. Go ahead and send him the link to the Zoom right now and say, Corbett and him want to talk to him right not later. He's got like five minutes or, and we're done. You know, so he, he, he has a chance. So you're saying there's a chance. Okay. So, you know, Don will take care of it. But uh, yeah, it's Agris Market. Yeah, this is gelling, man. You know, this is, yep. we, you know, we have, you know, Don, we can do the art. We already kind of had the concept and, and did it. You know, the, I think at the time what was happening, that was right after we had done uh, Pi Day. We had uh, uh, Bitcoin Summit. I think that's around then. You know, it was after that or right before that or something. And all the currencies started changing. You know, mm. the Bitcoin, yeah, maybe, you know, it's kind of, you know, side, right. you know, this and fork of whatever the hell. And, eh. yep, you know, yep, yep. but that wasn't really, and that was kind of what their motivation was. For me, it was, if you do Black Market Friday, you build up the ecosystem that you want to, which is what Mike is doing. You know, this is why he's doing this for exactly what we're talking about. And I mentioned it, I put it in there, but if I go, you know, yeah, we're willing to push it a little bit. We'll get some, uh, let's add some more vendors, you know, get some, you know, people up there. And he's got a site, I think, too. So, you know, mm -hmm. do that. And James says so. And you have him on and yak it up. Boom, done. Done. Two days. Mm -hmm. Or we can set up a three-way, at a, a, you know, next week or whatever. And, yeah. and we can uh, roll this out. Well, I'm going to go ahead and start, you know, uh, working. Do you have him on the line? Are you talking to him at this moment? She's like, you know, hold on. So I, I, I can get no more faster okay. information. So she'll, she'll take care of it. She's on it. So, um, yeah, this is a solution. You know, this, this helps. You know, if I'm going to go, yeah, I'm going to go look for my uh, uh, energy decentralized solar, or somebody install it, bite me thing. Might as well do it on here, you know not give them the money and get some labor of it. You know, and this is what I'm seeing happen. This is what I'm hoping to find. This is what I'm finding as I keep to the rural areas, you know. Okay, did you send them the link? He's doing it right this freaking moment. See? Boom, Donna. You know? That's right. Gosh darn it. <laughs> okay, well, hopefully, see, I go to participants or he'll just pop up. I got my, right, there he is. Boom. All right, Mike, I got you. Mike. You got to turn on your mic, but uh, man, and your camera if you want, whatever. There you go. All yep. right. Say hello. All right, all right, all right. Real quick, you know, we're uh, over time with James Corbett. But we're talking about solutions mm -hmm. of the great whatever the heck's coming, and we need to, you know, they them those bad, 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 bad. And we had, and I think I might have sent you something before. We have blackmarketfriday.net, I mean, .info, okay? We got a special edition site. It's sitting there. I know you, you had set up something. You got Agris Marketplace up, and James Corbett and I are willing to, you know, we'll do a little something, something. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll drive it towards this. We'll see if we can get you some vendors to sign up or generally promote the concept that people, you know, use alternative currencies with alternative shopping with alternative people and not just keep giving, you know, Bezos a bunch of money. You feel me? Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. The website is agorist.market. Dot com or something. No, that's it. Just agorist.market. Okay. All right. Yeah, market is. I didn't know dot market was a top level domain. Yep. Yeah, cool. he's a geek. He's one of those guys. So you know. Uh, all right. So. Oh yeah, I gotta jump on these things quick. Yep. Agorist. Dot. Market. Boom. Market. 
D. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Hey, man, you know, big. Well, sorry, like, there you go. Yeah, that was cool. All right. So now we have a web page, and uh, do you have a listing somewhere of people? Yeah. Cat okay. Cat at the top, listing. you'll find their categories or alphabetized or in order of when the uh, listing was placed. Okay. Very cool. You know, just you know. Yeah, uh, that is cool. And then we already got something. You know, ooh, and a barber. That's what I need. Freaking come cut my hair without that. Do I have to wear a mask? You know? All right. <laughs> I hope not. And then you got different festivals up here and people and stuff. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, all right. cool. Well, we can add the Corbett Report to that list and because uh, I take memberships in Bitcoin or crypto. Cool. Okay, so what does anyone need from you? Because you know, a lot of his, his followers are going to watch this. They're going, I'll list. You know, James will. You know, we got uh, Freemans Phoenix in there. We got, you know, Derek Bros. There he goes, Derek Bros. Contraband Coffee. You know, we, you know, get from them. Fork Fest is listed. Jackalope, you know, uh, the Mid-Continent Liberty Fest that he does. You know, so, yeah, 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 yeah. PPM Silver. All right, all right, all right, all right. What do people need to do right now? Send you, list me, do it. Okay. At the top menu, you'll see, uh, I think it says list for free or something like that. Boom. And instructions are there. Basically, they just email the information and it gets put on the website. Okay. If we do this, because I'm not, I mean, James, you're not worried about it being all, my goodness, flashy, whiz bang, neon. No, no. Light. no. In yeah. fact, uh, that's, that obviously makes me a little bit nervous when it's a little too flashy. Right, right, right. So I'm. Right. Yeah. This has no script. Uh, yeah, no cookie, exactly. Yeah. This is scriptless. Simple, simple, so I'm happy. Simple. Right. Okay. So we promote this. Or how much time do you have? Can you allocate towards managing it? If you have a bunch of people come in, you know, all of a sudden a hundred people, you got a, you know, six weeks uh, lag time of I need help of higher staff of, oh my God, or is it a form or you got to, I mean, tell us what kind of volume you can handle. Uh, let's see. Each one gets handled individually. Both Leslie and I can work on it. Uh, we're retired. So we have a little extra time. Okay. So I mean, on that, I can let you know. Yeah, you know, you need help, let us know. I mean, I'd be, I mean, yeah, that's kind of problems you like to have. I mean, you know, so. Right. Um, uh, and there might be people who want to help and so on. All right. Is this something to work with, James? What do you think? Let's do it. Yep. I am going right. to put this out there and uh, we can do a special, like a uh, focused 10 minute video on it as well. If I, if I can get your details, Michael, I'll, I'll have you on and we can talk about your site. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, let's uh, do it. Donna, go ahead and send James all the contact information for Mike, will you please? Is that all right, Mike? Oh, yeah. Okay, boom. So what we'll go ahead and do is uh, uh, I'll take um, uh, Black Market uh, Friday dot info and I'll do whatever to help promote this and pimp it. And I'll need you to generate me a banner ad for this, okay? You know, and then we'll put, you know, Black Market Friday on this because I don't have time to manage it and deal with whatever. I'll promote and we'll archive and we'll, you know, put a bunch of things like this, you know, yours and another or another, you know, hopefully it's Silk Road. Okay, so here's here's what I'm thinking. Um, we'll let people know about agris.market, but I think uh, for the next couple of weeks, uh, the campaign should be around Black Market Friday, right? Yeah, okay, okay, you're right. There's right. going to be a lot of energy yeah. around that idea, yeah. at least for yeah. the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Well, I tell you, the one thing is that I would promote agris.market as yeah. part of that, yeah. And then if there's any others that we can have. Now, Mike, well, you're going to redirect Black Market Friday dot info to agorist.market, right? I can. I mean, is that what you Yeah, do? if you do that, then, okay, then it's all okay, wrapped okay, in the done. One. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. All right, Donna, write down, remind me, because I don't forget 30 seconds from now, that I need to forward um, Black Market Friday dot info to uh, agorist market dot market. Okay. I'll get this done by tomorrow. I got to go to dinner, but the, um, uh, okay. Yeah. All right. You in Mike? Sounds good. All right. Cool. James, we, we got, we got a project for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Just to give what for. Yep. Let's do it. Boom. Boom. Let's leave it on. See positive note. Damn it. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, there's always, there's always, there's always hope. Hope spring eternal here on declare your independence and you don't even need a government form. All right. Pimp out. Both of you guys pimp out your sites, man. Go. CorbettReport.com. Okay. Agorist.market. Boom. Thanks, guys.
And we'll, we'll, we'll talk soon. Well, let me you know, work on this a little bit, guys, and I'll get back with you tomorrow afternoon, okay? Awesome. All right, Sounds we're good. on it. Boom, done. Hey, and uh, Ernie, let me know when you put this video up so I can link to it. Okay, yeah, we'll get it up. Um, okay. It'll be tonight, and Donna will send you this, all the goodies. Cool, all right. All right, thanks, guys. Bye. All right, take care. Okay, bye.